Hey everyone, welcome to today's lesson on the MRI of the cervical spine. In this lesson, we will look at some anatomy on sagittal and axial scans. Let's get started. Starting with the sagittal view, slices start laterally. We can see the cerebellum located superiorly. You can see the dark line anteriorly, which indicates a saturation pulse was used to reduce swallowing motion. Moving medially, you can see the articular pillars, made up of the superior and inferior articular process forming the zygopophyseal joint. You can also see the profile of one of the vertebral arteries. Towards the top of the image, the lateral mass of C1 is visible. Looking inferiorly, you can see the intervertebral foramen, where the spinal nerves exit the spine. As we move medially, the anterior arch and posterior arch of C1 are visible, along with slices through part of the cervical vertebral bodies. The CSF in the spinal canal appears bright because this is a T2-weighted image. There are many important structures at this mid-sagittal view. First, there are important ligaments which include the anterior longitudinal ligament, which runs down the anterior side of the vertebral bodies, the posterior longitudinal ligament, which runs down the posterior side of the vertebral bodies, and the supraspinous ligament, which runs down the tips of the spinous processes. The ligamentum flavum connects the lamina of each vertebrae. For bony structures, we can see a portion of the clivus at the most superior portion of the image. Directly inferior is the dens, which is a part of C2. The anterior arch and posterior arch of C1 are visible. It is important to be familiar with how to properly count the vertebrae. The tall portion of the dens is the indication that the largest vertebrae visible is C2. C1 is called the atlas and C2 is called the axis. Counting inferiorly on this image, we can see C3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, the disc space between C7 and T1 continuing down to T2, 3, and 4. The cerebellum and cerebellar tonsils are visible on the superior portion of the image, around the foramen magnum. The inferior portion of the medulla oblongata is also demonstrated which then extends into the spinal cord going down the spinal canal. On this first axial view, we can see the bright CSF and the spinal cord right at the level of the foramen magnum. Immediately anterior is the anterior arch of C1. Moving inferiorly, the dens begin to appear anterior to the foramen magnum, along with the lateral masses of C1 local immediately lateral to the dens. On this image, you can also see the dark band located anteriorly which indicates a saturation pulse was used to reduce swallowing and pulsation motion. Moving inferiorly again, we can see the dens with the body of C2 located laterally. On this slice, we see the last portion of C2 anterior to the CSF and the spinal cord. In continuing inferior, we reach the more traditionally shaped vertebral bodies. You can see the vertebral body located anterior to the cerebral spinal fluid, which is bright, and the spinal cord, which appears as gray, because this is a T2-weighted image. The vertebral arteries are seen on the right and left of those vertebral bodies inside the transverse foramen. Jumping down to a more inferior slice, we can see the vertebral disc, with the vertebral arteries located immediately lateral, and the CSF and spinal cord located immediately posterior in the spinal canal. We can determine the slice is through the disc due to the darker appearance. Some of the light gray areas around the spinal canal are denticulant ligaments. These ligaments prevent the spinal cord from moving around within the spinal canal. We can also see the intervertebral foramina, where the spinal nerves exit the spinal canal. As the slices continue inferiorly, this view demonstrates the lamina well. Remember, the lamina form together to protect the posterior aspect of the spinal canal. Again, the vertebral arteries are demonstrated as well as the internal jugular veins. On this last slice, it's important to take note of the ligaments, as they are all well demonstrated here. The anterior longitudinal ligament is a dark area located on the anterior portion of the spine. The posterior longitudinal ligament is located on the posterior side of the vertebral bodies. The supraspinous ligament is seen on the most posterior portion of the spinous process. Another ligament that is best demonstrated in this view is the ligamentum flavum. This ligament connects the lamina to other lamina located in superior and inferior. It forms a barrier on the posterior side of the spinal canal. Thanks for watching. 
This has been an overview of the cervical spine as seen in MRI imaging.